Welcome back weavers. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and today we are going to start weaving on the 4th of July towels. So this is a plain weave pattern that has um, frequent color change stripes in it and the end product should show a what will appear to be like little red and blue stars on a white field. So in the previous video, I demonstrated how to thread a simple uh, two shaft pattern onto the eight shaft loom. And you can go and look at that video as a precursor to this one, but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we are back here with the warp uh, lashed onto the uh, apron rod and I am getting ready to uh, throw my first picks. But I wanted to show you how um, it looks before we start weaving on it. And uh, we're going to be weaving this um, in the same pattern that it is threaded. So we're going to be weaving um, two uh, treadles, uh, treadle one and treadle two. Those treadle one will raise um, all the even shafts, treadle two will raise all the odd shafts, and we will be throwing uh, two picks of red, two picks of white, two picks of blue, and then two picks of white, and we'll just keep repeating that. So this does entail working with three shuttles. Because we have three colors, we're going to be doing two picks of each color. Um, so I've got two of my shuttles with um, that are uh, closed bottom boat shuttles, uh, side feed. These are nice big shuttles. Um, they're sack, or no, they're Leclerc's. Uh, they're pretty much the only ones that I can find that make a, a long shuttle that takes the larger eight inch bobbins. I think those are eight inches. Um, the smaller bobbins, uh, just, they don't seem to hold as much yarn, obviously, because they're smaller. And so, uh, I have two of the boat shuttles. I only have two boat shuttles, so I'm also going to be using my end feed shuttle, which I don't really like mixing the two because they do tend to, um, pull at the selvages a little bit differently. So we'll have to keep that in mind when we're weaving. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, throw our uh, waste yarn in here and uh, create our hatter and to spread the warp and then we'll get started weaving. All right, so um, I have this uh, wool left over from a previous project that I'm not gonna be needing. So I like to use wool to do my headers because um, as, I, as I've mentioned before, it has some bite to it and will tend to hold the yarn a little bit better. Um, this happened to be, I was weaving double with it, so we'll just use it that way. It's not, a, not an issue. So I'm going to put in one pick, don't be going to chain sheds. I will put in the second pick. This one will be at an angle. I'm not going to make it tight over here on the end. We're not going to beat. Change our sheds again. And you can do this uh, with pretty much any pattern. Um, so then the third pick Again, we leave lots of extra loop or space here. We don't want it drawing in, but I'm going to put it again across even. I'm going to let close my shed and then I'm going to beat. Pull it all down. And I'm not gonna pull it real tight down. Look at that. That is a perfectly distributed work. Um, now, I will put in a few more picks of uh, the header scrap yarn just 
so that it holds everything in place. And this time I'm going to put it about where I want my selvage to be. And I'm going to be on an open shed. I personally always beat on an open shed um, on, on the floor loom. The table loom, it's a little bit more challenging to do that because my feet can do the work and um, my hands can't do both things at the same time on the table loom as easily. So. All right. There we have it. So now we will go ahead and cut that off of there. And we can start our weaving. I'm going to grab my, um, my little needle that I use to split my tails um, so that I can uh, split the tails to tuck them. Um, and I do that because it just makes a little bit nicer um, finish on uh, when you're using a thicker yarn. All right, so we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, use just the white and create a, uh, a one inch uh, hem allowance. So I'm going to leave uh, a couple inches there at the end, and then I'm going to leave my shed open, and I will take and pull that out of the shed um, about an inch to an inch and a half, and then I will untwist this um, yarn so that I can, now this is 8-4 yarn, and I'm going to split it into uh, two plies. I'm going to take one of those uh, plies of two threads, and I'm going to put it back through the sh same shed, go around my end thread, and come back in the same shed and up one thread beyond where we split the plies. And what that does is it makes it uh, so that you have a half of a thickness of the yarn going through the shed, going around the end thread and back through the shed so that you have a full thickness of yarn. Then once it is wet finished and hemmed, you can't tell that it was ever done. So we'll go ahead and do our hem allowance. And I've only done four picks. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check my beat. Um, this is 12 picks per inch, so four picks should be a quarter of an inch. And we are perfect. So it's good to check it before you get too far in. Um, obviously it's uh, might pack in a little bit more as you progress, but you should be okay. Just check it often. All right, so we've got um, two, four, six, eight, ten. Do two more. Eleven. And we'll check and that should be an inch okay so it is a little less than an inch 
So I need to not be quite as hard. We'll put a couple more picks in. And that should get us where we belong. All right, perfect. So I will keep that in mind that um, I need to not beat, I need to just place my yarn. So now we're going to start our pattern. And I am going to use, uh, so the pattern is two picks of red, two picks of white, two picks of blue, two picks of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my color from the opposite side that I started my white from. And it will just help the, it'll help the shuttles not get tangled up with each other as badly. Um, so we're going to do the same thing that we did with the white, where we will split our tail So now we're going to start our color and weave. And what I need to do is I need to make sure that I am catching um, the thread that is not being used. So if the white thread comes up over that outside thread, then I need to go over it with the red to capture it. Now, since I started the red on the left-hand side, um, I will start the blue from the right-hand side. But first, we need to do um, two picks of white. And this... Because the red came and is going down, I need to go under the red. Get that across there. And now I will start with the blue. And we're going to tuck that tail also. So now this one will need to go over the blue or over the red.
you can see how fun these are. Um, they're giving some cool interaction between the three colors. And when it is wet finished, um, the blue and the red uh, surrounded by white will look like little stars. I've been waving along here and I uh, this is the second towel and I thought it might be helpful to show you how the edge turns out based on the different techniques for um, handling how the shuttles interact with each other so on this one I started the white from the right and I started both the blue and the red from the left. And when I pass the shuttle back and forth, I'm not worrying about catching these threads to pull them up the side. And uh, what that does is over here, you're going to have the white thread that will skip over where I do the blue and the red. So you can see that the white and the uh, red selvage thread just kind of barber pull up um, on this side and actually I'll get you closer in here so that you can see this a little better okay so you can see how on the left where the red and the blue uh, go up the side I'm not wrapping the white thread around the blue and the red thread as I go up. I'm just letting them hang. And when I use the uh, blue or the red thread, I'm taking, so like the next thread will be blue. So I am taking the blue under the th red. And I'm only really doing that so that I can be consistent and you can get the kind of the wrapping of the blue and the red thread along this edge. Um, so that is one way to do it. Now on the next towel, I think what I might do is uh, have the red and the blue threads start from opposite sides. So one of them will start from the same side as the white, uh, probably the blue thread since it is the uh, third color in the sequence. 
Um, but that should give me, uh, I'll catch that blue thread and the, uh, there won't be as large of a, actually, you know what? If I did that, I'm going to have a very large, um, transition between the two red stripes and nothing to kind of corral it like the blue uh, thread is doing here. So I think this is probably the best method, but I'm going to go ahead and try it uh, on the next towel and see how it, um, how it behaves. I can always unweave it, um, but all, doing it this way also makes it a lot faster because I've kind of got a technique that I've developed in handling the shuttles so that I don't have to fumble with wrapping them around each other. Um, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate that a little bit here. So I've got you zoomed out quite a ways so that you can see all my shuttles. And I'm going to have my white shuttle is going to stay down here on uh, my bench when I'm not using it. And then on the left, my blue and my red shuttles will alternate which one is up here and which one is down here. Um, and you'll see why in a second here. So uh, my next uh, thread that I'm going to throw is my blue. So when I do that, I'm going to pick this one up to throw, and I should pick that up the right way so that it's ready to throw. At the same time, I'm going to move this one down here, and that will make it ready to pick up and throw when I'm ready to throw the red shuttle. Um, when I get done throwing the blue shuttle for its two picks, it will come back up here. So let's demonstrate that. So you can see uh, the blue thread is kind of going under the red thread there. And I'm not doing anything with the white thread over here. I'm just going to let it wrap on its own. Now I'm going to put this one here, and then I'm going to throw my white. Thread. Now red is my next pick. So I'm going to pick up my red over here, move my blue down here. That puts the red coming underneath the blue, like I want it to, and kind of barber pulling. And I'm going to put that there, pick up the white. This will also make it so that I don't uh, mix up which color, red or blue, is next in my series. I'm always going to pick up the color on my left bench. So we'll just continue on and then when I get to the next towel, we'll try the um, alternate way of doing it and we'll see how that works. Okay, weavers, here we are back with our woven towels. They have been washed, dried, and hemmed. And I got four towels out of the uh, warp, which I was totally expected. And so this really turned out fun. It almost has like a houndstooth pattern to it, but it's plain weave. 
So there's a lot that you can do with plain weave in using colors to create a weave structure that looks complex, um, but it doesn't have to be complex. Uh, we used 8-4 cotton set at 12 picks per inch and 12 ends per inch, and that has created a nice um, heavy towel. I really like the feel of it. It's, it's a little sturdier than um, using the 8-2 cotton. So these turned out really nice. I did want to show you the uh, selvage structure on each one because I tried different uh, inner, inner weaving techniques on those edge selvages. So this is the first towel I did and I was wrapping each uh, thread around the other ones to carry them up and catch them. And you can see here, so this is uh, the side that would have been on my right. And then this is the side that was on the left. Or maybe I have those backwards. I can't remember. Um, no, this, this was the my right hand side. And you can see how you can see all four color or all, all three colors that are interacting together and wrapping around each other. And eh, to me, it looks a little messy. Um, so that wasn't my favorite technique. Uh, plus it took longer to do. The second towel, I started both the blue and the red on the left hand side and the white on the right hand side. And that created a very nice edge here um, on the right and the left side you can see how the red and the blue kind of wrap around each other um, longer floats but i don't think that they're like horribly long and i don't think that you would catch your finger on them or anything uh, then we tried this one, we tried having the red and the blue start from opposite sides. So the uh, red, white and the blue started from the right and the red started from the left. And you can see how the red or the blue and the white kind of wrap around each other a bit. And then um, the red just carries up and I kind of like this look um, the, because the red uh, selvage thread, that last selvage thread was red. And so um, the weft thread that is going around um, and carrying up is less visible because it just kind of blends in with that selvage thread. Um, over here, uh, it looks a little bit messy, but um, it's not too bad. And then for the last towel, I think I went back to having the white start on the right and the blue and the red on the left and just kind of wrapping up and around. So I think all in all, I like uh, that salvage technique best, um, but all of them look fine. Um, this one, uh, I didn't even realize until I uh, took a picture of it, but you can see I messed up on the, um, whoop, where'd it go? Right here. So you can see I messed up a bit on the um, color sequencing. I forgot to throw a couple picks of the white between the blue and the red. So this one will go in my drawer for my home use and um, the others will go into my Etsy store and if you would like to go and take a look at those and maybe purchase one or two you can do that and using the code in the description you'll get 20% off. So go ahead and take a look at those. 
Um, in the meantime, I've got another project uh, set up on the rigid huddle loom. Um, I keep li liking playing with the plain weaves, so we're going to keep on that. But I do have some projects planned for some twills soon. Uh, I plan to put on an eight yard warp and uh, thread it in a straight draw like we did with this. But then the tie up, I can uh, weave several different twills. Um, I think there are 76 different um, patterns that I can weave with just that one straight draw in different twills. So we'll experiment and play with that. But uh, before that, I'm going to do one more, at least one more, um, plain weave project and create a uh, handbag that looks like it is a twill, but it's not. And the way that I do that is by using a variegated yarn. So uh, stay tuned for that project. And um, in the meantime, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, liking, joining my channel, um, telling all your friends about my channel. I really appreciate all you guys watching and thanks again. Happy weaving.